Are you a fan of cookies, specifically chocolate chip? If you answered no, you and the U.S. military have something in common. Don't understand? Well, we're referring to the U.S. six-color desert camouflage, known by its nickname of chocolate chip. It was a pattern that was good in theory, but not always in execution. So how does coffee sound instead? Just be careful you don't spill it, as it can stain. In this one, we'll be covering the pattern that replaced the six-color, the U.S. three-color desert pattern that gained the nickname of coffee stain camouflage. In 1990, Saddam Hussein has invaded and occupied Kuwait. As a response, the U.S. helped form an international coalition to drive Iraqis out and liberate the occupied nation. Known as the Gulf War, this conflict resulted in coalition militaries from 35 nations being sent all over Kuwait and the surrounding areas, oftentimes sporting various camouflage patterns some temperate but many arid, befitting of the desert terrain. The U.S. military is wearing its six color for the first time on a large scale, but what's this? Some select forces are utilizing another pattern made up of only three. What's up with that? Well, to best understand its creation, we must first look at the U.S. six-color desert and its reason for being. Long story short, during the Cold War, specifically the 1960s, the U.S. realized it needed a desert camouflage in the event they had to aid Israel or get boots on the ground in the Middle East. And so, starting not long after, they began development on desert patterns, one for daytime use and one for nighttime. The six color, also known as Desert Daytime Camouflage and later DBDU, was developed using the southwestern United States as its primary frame of reference, while the Night Camouflage Desert Pattern, or simply Night Desert, was created, well, for night and was designed to primarily hide its wearers from night vision devices. You can watch the full videos on those two patterns, links for which can be found in the description. Anyway, fast forward to the early 1980s and the two patterns were adopted for use by select units operating within the region. Meanwhile, in April of 1980, the Saudi Arabian National Guard sent out a request to the U.S. to assist them in finding suitable colors that would ultimately be used to develop a camouflage that could be painted on larger vehicles and equipment and eventually be used for netting and uniforms. A fact-finding team from the Belvoir Research Development Development and Engineering Center was sent to the country five months later to analyze and determine proper colors to help with the development. These tests primarily consisted of painting vehicles different colors and checking their effectiveness in a number of locations and environments. The results essentially indicated that two colors were very effective, one called Saudi Sand and another referred to as Color 6. Generally though, these colors were much brighter and closer to tan and gray shades, which were more prevalent throughout the Middle East. It wasn't long until two and two were put together and the military realized that the current six color desert pattern was too dark for most terrains in the region. This coupled with negative responses from wearers that ranged from certain colors retaining heat to its overall ineffectiveness caused the Army Material Command being given the task of developing a new camouflage in 1985. This time around, though, they wanted to create a pattern that would work not only during the day, but at night as well. Using the color data collected in Saudi Arabia during those tests, as well as various others from the Middle East and U.S. desert regions, Natick Labs produced a number of experimental patterns. Official reports listed only an initial seven, and then later an additional four for a total of 11. However, based on tags seen in a few surviving pieces, it appears that as many as 17 were produced, if not more. One of the more interesting ones that was likely an early prototype saw the six color desert pattern altered to one closer to a three color. This photo shows a uniform being worn by a US Army Lieutenant General during exercise Shadowhawk in 1987. How and why he is, and seems to be the only one wearing it, is something of a mystery. That aside though, a final 1989 report specified that an initial evaluation was conducted resulting in patterns 4, 5, and 6 of the initial 7 proving to be the most effective. Based on the results, an additional 4 uniforms were produced and tested in 1987 alongside the other 3 and the standard 6 color desert as a control at 10 different locations located throughout the southwestern United States. Of those 7 final camouflages, four were three color patterns utilizing various tan, khaki, and brown colors, one was a two color pattern consisting of khaki and clay colors, and finally two were solid colored uniforms, one tan and one khaki. Unfortunately, picture quality of available copies of the final report isn't the best, but you can get a sort of idea as to the looks of the ones trialed. 
Testing consisted of anywhere from 10 to 15 observers viewing subjects made up of Marines from Camp Pendleton and personnel from Natick Labs as well as Belvoir R&D at 25 meters during the day with the naked eye and at night with PVS-4 night vision devices. These tests were conducted at 10 separate sites all over the states of Arizona, California, and Nevada. The results? Well, the worst rated uniforms in both daytime and nighttime viewings were numbers 9 and 1, number 9 being a solid khaki colored uniform, and 1 being the current issue US 6 colored desert pattern. The best rated patterns in the daytime were uniforms 4, 5, and 8, those being two three color patterns and a solid tan uniform whereas the highest scoring patterns during the night were 4, 5, 6, and 10. 6 and 10 were both three color camouflage patterns as well. So how did they choose the overall winner? Well, they averaged the scores of the best camouflages both in day and night scenarios over the 10 locations. The top three uniforms had minor differences in their overall scores, and so the decision appears to have been made based on observers' preferences. This resulted in number four being chosen, which was composed of light tan 379, khaki 384, and light brown 381. It was then given the official name of desert camouflage pattern, but is often referred to in reports and documents as the three color camouflage pattern, but is most often called today as simply three or tricolor desert. If you want to see the full report, we'll have a link in the description. Stacked up against the six color, you can see it's vastly different. It sees the removal of three colors, those being black, white, and one of the browns. Additionally, a lot of the shapes have been changed, going from ones that would be reminiscent of rocky, more uneven, arid terrains like the deserts of the southwestern United States, to more basic ones that would be effective in not only those terrains, but also more sparse ones one would encounter throughout the Middle East and around the world. Because of the simpler designs in it, and the more conservative use of brown colors, the pattern just worked better and helped it gain the nickname of coffee stain, as the browns were reminiscent of coffee stains on paper and other items. In this case, less was more. And so it wasn't long until early trial pieces were made in a cut similar to BDUs. These early uniforms began being seen in very, very limited numbers in 1989, but saw field use for the first time in 1990 during the Gulf War, where they were seen and tested on a larger scale. Though there are examples of infantry units receiving the new camouflage during the war, a majority of uniforms sent over were issued to high-ranking officers such as generals, most notably Norman Schwarzkopf, as well as troops primarily in support roles stationed in Saudi Arabia such as Select Air Force Security Airmen. Exact reasons why the uniform didn't make its way to most other forces isn't readily known, though some likely reasons were, one, the three color was still technically experimental and with much of the logistical handlings of US forces being done in Saudi Arabia, troops closest to bases and other locations receiving all the necessary equipment and gear likely had easier access to them. Two, being that these forces were in the very same country where the six color was discovered to be less than suitable, plus the fact that they weren't in direct combat likely made them perfect candidates to test out the pattern and its effectiveness in a safer, more controlled environment. And finally three, the most likely reason, was that most forces were stretched throughout the desert already. With so many arriving in theater, many hadn't even received the entirety of the six color and desert night uniforms in time for Desert Storm. This was so much so that there were instances of troops having to return their six color when being rotated out, and even some forces not receiving their sets until they were about to leave the region. So, rolling out an entirely new pattern and uniform would have been a colossal logistical feat. Either way, by October of the same year, the pattern was approved as the new standard desert uniform and production began in a few different pieces. By the end of the war, they had begun being seen more frequently on soldiers, with it becoming somewhat commonplace by the end of 1991. Come 1992, the Air Force followed suit, however the six color desert pattern continued to linger in many instances, specifically with the Marine Corps and Navy. Over the next few years, this pattern was seen on uniforms that often included features such as inside back yokes and waist adjustment tabs as seen on older DBDUs, as well as hot weather battle dress uniforms made up of different materials. However, by 1993, the various pieces were more or less consolidated into a new uniform the pattern would become synonymous with, the Desert Combat Uniform or DCU. Though not technically all that different from the BDU or DBDU, this version saw the fabric change to a ripstop 50-50 nylon cotton. This made them cheaper and easier to make, along with the added user benefits of them being lighter, more comfortable, and retaining less heat. 
The first major operations the DCU's and three color pattern saw action in was during Operation Restore Hope and UNISOM 2, or the United Nations operations in Somalia 2, both of which were centered around ensuring humanitarian relief in Somalia during its civil war. It was here that both the older six color and the new three color desert were used side by side by a variety of US military personnel. For the most part, the six color pattern was still the primary camouflage used by a majority of US forces throughout the region. However, there were many instances of both being used together. For example, DCUs were seen being worn with six-color Pazgit helmets and vest covers over them. Perhaps the most famous example of the new pattern's usage was seen being worn by Task Force Ranger during Operation Gothic Serpent and the Battle of Mogadishu in which the now famous Black Hawk Down incident occurred. By 1996, the US Six Color had more or less been phased out of use, being fully replaced by the new tricolor uniforms. The next few years saw it issued to many forces operating in the Middle East and other arid environments, but its largest, most significant, and final outings were yet to come. After the events of 9-11, October of 2001 to be exact, the U.S. began Operation Enduring Freedom with its invasion of Afghanistan and its fight against Taliban and Al-Qaeda. Not long after, March of 2003, the invasion of Iraq was initiated to overthrow Saddam Hussein and to stop possible usage of WMDs. Both considered fronts in the global war on terror, these conflicts saw U.S. forces operating in largely arid, sparse, and often desert terrain which required a desert uniform and thus the three-color pattern. Early years of both wars saw U.S. soldiers, Marines, airmen, and sailors spread across both countries wearing the pattern along with a variety of U.S. woodland equipment. One such example of this is the now distinctive look of DCUs with woodland vests, which can be traced back to this time period. However, come 2004, the beginning of the end for the DCU and tricolor pattern was seen. The US Army was in the final stages of selecting a new camouflage pattern and uniform cut. As a part of this, it started issuing trial CCUs, or close combat uniforms, to select striker brigades in three color. This would of course be a predecessor to their newer ACUs. Meanwhile, the same year saw the Marine Corps complete its transition to its new digital MARPAT uniforms. Though technically the MCCUUs, short for Marine Corps Combat Utility Uniforms, had begun development in 2001, most Marines received the new pattern by spring of 2005, and by 2006 the three color was all but replaced in the core by way of the new era digital design. Not long after, 2008, the U.S. Army saw its DCUs retired with the Army Combat Uniform with the new UCP, or Universal Camouflage Pattern, printed on it taking its place. The Air Force and Navy would also follow suit in 2011 and 2012 with their Airmen Battle Uniforms with Digital Tiger Stripe and Navy Working Uniforms sporting a blue digital design. Last but not least, in 2012, the Coast Guard retired the three color, instead taking advantage of their already issued operational dress uniforms, as well as camouflage patterns of other branches, most notably Navy NWUs. And with that, the US three color desert pattern was retired. However, it still can be seen on occasion by way of smaller pieces throughout the branches, as well as by certain Special Forces members. The US tricolor is considered by many to be a basic but effective desert camouflage pattern. Compared to its predecessor, its simple use of three colors and shapes has caused it to become one of the more popular patterns in both the military and collector's worlds, as far as desert camouflage goes. Much like the various other US patterns that preceded it, it has gained quite a bit of mileage and usage among various other countries around the world by way of U.S. surplus, clones, and copies. A few countries that utilized it were Saudi Arabia, the very country that helped its development, Afghanistan, Iran, Albania, Niger, El Salvador, Argentina, Sudan, Egypt, Croatia, Thailand, and the Dominican Republic. Well, looks like we reached the end of another widely requested video. Hopefully it was enjoyable and a few new things were learned along the way. As always, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification, or simply check back periodically for more of the history of, right here on Uniform History.